Everywhere she looked, she saw a world full of stories. So she has one that she hasn't sung. Have you? Well, I'd rather not try that, actually. I haven't tried it enough oh, more to, to do it well. Why don't you just sing it and we won't record it? Oh, I can do that. I'd like to hear it again. Let's hear how it goes. <clears throat> yeah. right. This has a biblical text. <laughs> I have considered the lilies They never toil, they only bloom They never feel chilly or tired or silly And they don't need much room I When my grandma was little, she and her sister used to go to the movies. It was the 1920s the movies were still silent. Music and images, and sometimes a black background title card with white text on it, explaining what somebody said or something you had to know to understand the story. My grandma was so little when they first started going, she couldn't read. And my grandma would lean over and ask her older sister to tell her what each title card said. And her sister would say, nope. So my grandma never knew what was happening. A word has power in and of itself. It comes from nothing into sound and meaning. It gives origin to all things. By means of words can a man deal with the world on equal terms. And the word is sacred. A man's name is his own. He can keep it or give it away as he likes. And the lovely little lilies of the valley. Oh, 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 the culture would persist for a while, but then it would be gone, and there would be very little material evidence that it had ever been. They repeated stories about what happened in Oakland and San Diego like medicine chants, the beer bottles beating down on the countertop like drums. I was consumed with this thought. What happens to the love between a mother and child? What happens to the memories that a family made at the kitchen table when those family members are no more? We lived alone, my house and I, we had the Houses are like sentinels in the plain, old keepers of the weather watch. There, in a very little while, wood takes on the appearance of great age. We wrote our names in a line on the wall next to the date. And right above, I saw in faint, faint pencil, dates much older than we had assumed could be in that cabin. Three names that looked like ours with the date next to them. Maybe there was no one living in the cabin anymore, but so many people had passed through. So many names were living on the walls. You imagine there is nothing within, and indeed there are many ghosts, bones given up to the land. To look upon that landscape in the early morning with the sun at your back is to lose the sense of proportion. Your imagination comes to life, and this, you think, is where creation was begun. In between two tall mountains there's a place they call lonesome. Once in his life, a man ought to concentrate his mind upon the remembered earth. He ought to give himself up to a particular landscape in his experience, to look at it from as many angles as he can, to wonder about it, to dwell upon it, he ought to imagine that he touches it with his hands at every season and listens to the sounds that are made upon it. He ought to imagine the creatures there and all the faintest motions of the wind. He ought to recollect the glare of noon and all the colors of the dawn and dusk. How sad, how lovely, how short.
Yes, I thought, now I see the earth as it really is. Never again will I see things as I saw them yesterday or the day before. I'm going back to our land. I want to take David with me. Hey, wait a minute. I he's have to young, look. but he's changing. Now that I can have her only in memory, she seemed beyond the reach of time. My grandpa took pictures, and my grandma put those pictures in scrapbooks. But there are still everyday moments that are lost. But these are idle recollections, the mean and ordinary agonies of human history. A bitter fight over a messy room. A hello kiss more sweet than usual. Tense coffee after a sleepless night. The things you whisper to a crying baby in a dark nursery room. A kid breaking open her piggy bank for the first time. Telling your dreams to the dog when no one is around. Where do those memories go? They cannot hold still. An old love of going returns upon them. With the speed and density of a driving rain, stars were falling in the universe. We have brought the earth. Now it is time to play. As old as I am, I still have the feeling of play. At times, in the quiet of evening, I think she must have wondered, dreaming, who she was. Was she become in her sleep that old purveyor of the sacred earth? Perhaps that ancient one who, old as she was, still had the feeling of play? And in her mind, at times, did she see the falling stars? <laughs> 